Good morning. Today we are going to solve free response question number four from the 2018 AP Physics 1 exam. Bo, please read the problem through part A, double I. Flippin' physics. A transverse wave travels to the right along a string. Part A. Two dots have been painted on the string. In the diagram below, those dots are labeled P and Q. Part A, I. The figure below shows the string at an instant in time. At the instant shown, dot P has maximum displacement and dot Q has zero displacement from equilibrium. At each of the dots, P and Q, draw an arrow indicating the direction of the instantaneous velocity of that dot. If either dot has zero velocity, write V equals zero next to the dot. And there is a figure which I basically just described. Part A double I, the figure below shows the string at the same instant as shown in part A I. At each of the dots P and Q, draw an arrow indicating the direction of the instantaneous acceleration of that dot. If either dot has zero acceleration, write A equals zero next to the dot. And the second figure is exactly the same as the first figure. Thank you, Bo. Billy, please answer all of part A. Absolutely. Well, the, the string is a wave. Let's look at what the wave looks like when it is in motion to the right from just before this instant in time to just after this instant in time. Okay, let's start with part A, I, which is where we determine the directions of the velocities of those two points. And let's start with point P. Just before this instant in time, P was moving downward. Just after this time, P is moving upward. Therefore, right now, point P is at rest. Oh, you know what? That's just like an object thrown upward in free fall is at rest at its maximum height. Uh, looking at point Q. Just before this instant in time, Q was moving upward. Just after this time, Q will still be moving up. Therefore, right now, right now point Q is moving upward. So to answer the question, write V equals zero at point P and draw an upward arrow at point Q. Now let's do part A double I, where we determine the directions of the accelerations at the two points. Again, let's look at what the wave looks like when it is in motion to the right from just before this instant in time to just after this instant in time. Just before the instant in time, P was moving down. Just after this time, P will be moving up. Therefore, the change in velocity of P is upward and point P has moved, has an upward acceleration. Uh, again, just like an object thrown upward in free fall has a downward acceleration at its maximum height. Okay, in order to fully under understand point Q, remember that individual points on a mechanical wave move in simple harmonic motion. Because Q is at the equilibrium position, Q is moving at its maximum velocity, and point Q has zero acceleration. Actually, we also know point Q's acceleration is zero at this specific instant in time because before this time, its acceleration is upward, and after this time, its acceleration is downward. Therefore, at this instant in time, its acceleration is zero. Uh, oh, uh, so, so to answer the question, write um, A equals zero at point Q and draw an upward arrow at point P. Very nice, Billy. Bobby, please read and answer all of part B. Okay, uh, the figure below represents the string at time t equals zero, the same instant as shown in part A, when dot p is at its maximum displacement from equilibrium. For simplicity, dot q is not shown, and there, there's the figure. Um, part B, I, on the grid below, draw the string at a later time t equals capital T divided by four, where capital T is the period of the wave. Uh, and there is a grid which looks like the previous grid only without the wave on it. And part B double I, on your drawing above, draw a dot to indicate the position of dot P on the string at time T equals the period divided by four, and clearly the label the dot with the letter P. Okay, well, we know the time for a period is one full cycle, 
During one full cycle, the wave will move one wavelength, lambda, or 24 centimeters to the right. Therefore, during one-fourth of a full cycle, the wave will have gone a distance of one-fourth of a wavelength, or 24 centimeters, divided by four, which equals six centimeters to, to the right. The shape of the wave will not change, so just draw the wave moved to the right by six centimeters, which, which is the distance between two of the vertical dotted grid lines. For part B, double i, well, well, point P will stay on the wave at x equals 18 centimeters, therefore it will move up to y equals zero. So put a dot right there and label, label it with P right at the equilibrium position at x equals, the, the x equals 18 centimeter mark. Thanks, Bobby. Bo, please read and answer part C. Sure. Part C. Now consider the wave at time t equals capital T, the period. Determine the distance traveled, not the displacement, by dot p between times t equals zero and t equals the period, capital T. Well, during one full cycle, point p will start at y equals negative eight centimeters, move up through equilibrium to y equals positive eight centimeters, and then back down through equilibrium to y equals negative eight centimeters. Therefore, point P will have moved a distance equal to four times eight centimeters or 32 centimeters. Just write 32 centimeters. Can we really just write 32 centimeters? Yeah, we have to show our work, don't we? Thank you, Bo. To answer your question, Billy and Bobby, let's talk about how this question was graded. You can gain all seven points for this problem without writing out any calculations or explanations. Four points in part A, one for each item they specifically ask you for and do not require explanation. Two points in part B, one for each item they specifically ask you for and do not require explanation. And one point in part C, again, with no explanation or calculation. In fact, for part C, you can write just 32 centimeters with units and get full credit. That is weird. Yeah. Yep. I agree. I actually do suggest you write down your calculations, even if they are as simple as four times eight equals 32 centimeters, and then circle your answer. You are much less likely to make mistakes and lose points if you write down your calculations. Thank you very much for learning with me today. I enjoyed learning with you.